So um, today, I have 10 minutes to talk to you about life with gout. So, oh, wait. <laughs> Is that not good for today? So today we're talking about DNS. It's always DNS, right? It's always DNS. Let me add a little bit of uh, flavor around this. We are not talking about content filtering, like open DNS. We're not talking about that today. We're not talking about Active Directory DNS. We're not talking about bind for you random Unix geeks in the room. You know who you are. Um, we are talking about public hosted DNS. You know, the things that people care about to get to your website or your web stream or your mail server, whatever that might be. Here's a fun little refresher. This is actually how DNS works. I'll let you uh, bask in the beauty of that stolen image I got off of Google <laughs> Images this morning while I was sitting right back there. Um, let's talk about it. It's important. Sometimes it's hard to remember how all this works because it happens so fast and it's amazing. So you bring up your favorite web browser and you go to www.whatever.com and then inside your favorite web browser, www.whatever.com shows up. Mostly instantly, right? This is what happens. So you have to go through these steps of processes. I don't want to insult your intelligence by reading them to you, but I will anyway. So your browser needs to know how to get to www.whatever, right? It has to know the IP address. That's how all this works. Um, you guys have said in my networking sessions in the past, and I've not been invited to talk about networking in a while. I don't know how that happened. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so we have to get an IP address. So my computer has a DNS server that comes from DHCP or hard-coded. Hey, DNS server, how do I get there? I don't know. So that DNS server is configured to go to root hints. There are how many root hints around the world? Crickets, crickets. 13, 13 of them, which really means a whole lot more because they use a really special protocol, but it doesn't matter. The root servers say, I don't know how to get there, but they know how to get to .com. So then you ask .com, how do you get there? I don't know. So it goes to the domain, domain.com or domain.church.com or domain.church, which exists now, which is pretty cool. Um, and then you get an IP address back to a server, back to your workstation in like 20 milliseconds, right? That's crazy. You probably don't think about how it works because it happens so quickly. But let's talk about some terms. You have a registrar. You all have your favorite registrar, whatever it is, Network Solutions or GoDaddy. For those of you that don't like using GoDaddy, we'll call it Starfield, whatever that is, right? It's the same company. You have name servers for your domain. Usually, many times, that's your registrar, but you can authorize others. You have record types, like the A record, which is a host, dub, 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 or a quadruple A record for your IPv6 people. Quick, who's doing IPv6? <laughs> How many IP addresses are left to be handed out in the world? <laughs> Zero. You have MX records, which is how email works. You've got a start of authority record. This is the cool one. The start of authority record. This is actually what identifies a name server as being, you know, authoritative for your domain. And then there's many others, of course. And here's a really great one called TTL. This is the time to live. I go www.whatever.com and all that process, that eight step process I mentioned before happens. But what comes back with the results of the IP address is a time to live, usually a number of seconds. So let's say it's 1800 seconds, right? That's 30 minutes. That means that 30 minutes and one second, if I want to go back to www.whatever.com, that process happens all over again. So there's a product called DNS Made Easy. I like talking about this. This is one specific product. There's many others like it. There's dynamic DNS. There's easy DNS. There's DYN. Is that their new name now? I think DYN. It's an annual subscription, like $30 a year to do some really crazy things. Um, it can do failover DNS. How many of you guys have ever changed ISPs from at t to Sprint, from cable to DSL to whatever? And then you get to go to that process of changing your IP addresses and all your DNS records, and then all your firewall entries, and all those fun things that you hate to do. With a product like this, properly configured, you can have it pre-configured. You turn off the old ISP, three minutes later, everything comes back up. It's pretty neat. 
you can get those time to lives down to five seconds. So for the geeks in the room, you go, ooh, five seconds, that's awesome. For the rest of you, you don't care. But what's cool about that is when you make major maintenance, I'm changing my website, I'm changing my mail server, you have to have a maintenance window, right? I mean, I don't always test in production, but I do always test in production every single time. I test in your production, whether you know it or not. Um, so being able to change a record in five seconds is really amazing. I don't have to stay up wait at night, late at night, wait at night? I don't have to stay up wait at night um, to um, change my mail server over and wait a day for the new mail record to show up for my mail to start being delivered. That can happen in a matter of seconds. One thing that DNS Made Easy does as well, which is not actually a DNS function, it can do 301 and 302 redirection for you web nerds in the house. So if I have an entry like daryl.domain.com, I don't have to set up a special web server in order to read the header of daryl.domain.com and point it over to my blog. It can actually do it at the DNS server level. Let's talk about it a little bit. Three minutes, sweet. So here is, nope, fail. Here is my registrar. Is it not coming up? It's up over here. It is. I'm already there. I was already. Wow. Now it's gone here. Hey, I'll just turn around like this. I, yeah, I did, like twice before. Let's try it again. Welcome to HDMI. So one thing I, told, I didn't tell everybody, but I told the guys up front, is that I did the cardinal sin. I reloaded my laptop recently. Don't reload your laptop before you present. So when I log on here at my, um, this is really going to distract me because I can't see. I can, I can um, register my domain and send it my DNS information to somewhere else. For example, hunterit.com. I can tell my registrar to send my DNS information to a service like DNS Made Easy. And inside DNS Made Easy, this is really going to distract me, guys. I am so sorry. I can't make my computer work. And inside DNS Made Easy, I can configure all those various records that I was mentioning to you guys before. We'll go and look at Mirazons. This isn't anything majorly awesome in rocket science. It's just a different service to configure your records. And I was going to show you something really awesome, but I'm literally at a black screen right now. So let's talk about gout. Have we talked about gout yet? <laughs> let's go back here. I got an idea. Let's go to my DNS Made Easy console. So one of the domains I own is churchitguy.com. I am no longer a full-time church IT guy, but I play one on TV. And years ago, we played with this in IRC. Some of you may remember this. We played a little bit with redirect, and we created records. Remember how I mentioned to you web guys in the house, at the DNS level, you can have a host go somewhere else. So one of these I created was citrt.churchit.com guy.com, and it goes to churchitnetwork.com. It has a five-second TTL, right? So if you're changing blogs, your pastor decides to rebrand his blog. That never happens, right? Or maybe your church changed names. That never happens, right? Or maybe you're changing where something's pointing to, which happens usually Saturday night just before it launches Sunday morning, um, sometimes to all of you in the room. This is a way that you can talk through all of those things. And I want to show you one more brief thing, if I can figure out the mouse on that screen above me there, which I can't. This is a 100% uptime guarantee. Is anything ever 100% guaranteed? Mathematically, it's impossible. They were hit with a very, very large denial of service about seven or eight years ago. It interrupted my service for about three or four minutes. They gave me not only my subscription back for that month, but my subscription back for the entire year. They actually honor their warranty. They'll never get 100% back, right? I mean, that's just how math works. But if you're looking for something reliable, you're looking for something flexible, if you ever have to change anything, which all of you guys do, it's a good product to look at. I'll talk to you more about it sometime. Thank you. Thank you.